Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to have a look at cost variance and scheduling variance, which is part of the earned value analysis features that you get in Microsoft Project. So first of all, I have a small project on the screen where I haven't allocated any resources. So I'm going to go to the resource sheet. Now these are my resources, there's four people and then this product kits material and I am going to put that down at £50. Every time you use that it's going to cost £50. Everybody else is on £10 an hour. So if I go back to the Gantt chart and click on resources and assign resources, let's just, so coordinate teams that's going to be everybody, assign, train staff everybody, assign, Develop product. Let's say that's just going to be Anne and Bill and the product kits. I just held my control key down there. Assign. So let's say these they need 10 kits to start off with. So that's gone up to £500. Design sign off. That can be Anne. Test product. That's going to be Bob and Dave. And they're going to need some kits actually. So I'll do all three. And they probably would need 10 kits. Well, five kits we'll go for. Um, testing sign-off can be Dave. Market product can be Bill and Bob. And they will need some kits to market. So I'll assign them 20 kits. Oops. Overtype the wrong bit. Put that back in. 20 of them. And that'll do go live, doesn't need anybody assigning, it's just a milestone. So just going back to this, make sure I've not destroyed that. So back to the Gantt chart. So now we've got our Gantt chart and we've allocated the people. I don't want that showing like that, so I'm just going to double click and set that to show the task names by just typing name in that space, task names. Okay. And now I need to save a baseline, happy with that. So up to project, set baseline, set baseline, baseline. You've got up to 11 baselines, but I just want the first one, baseline. Now when you are, once you've set a baseline, when you're using project, you should really go and use the tracking Gantt. And that shows you the baseline marker, uh, the actual. So you can see both of them on there. And then, and then, um, what you can do after that is change this table to be the tracking table. So if I go view tracking and then I normally edit this to because you can't see the actual start date there. So if I just insert a column, so we want baseline start. So baseline start, there it is. Another one, insert column, baseline finish and then baseline insert column baseline duration duration can't see it for looking there it is so you've got an idea of when things are supposed to start and i don't really want this column so i'll just get rid of that i'm not actually delighted uh, deleting that i'm just um giving that um getting rid of it hiding it if i just um click back onto the normal gantt chart so the screen seems to have gone a bit funny there there we go back it is Right, so we're ready for that. Now you can add extra columns there. So let's add the SV scheduling variance column. So you've got a percentage there as well. And the cost variance column, CV. So we haven't spent anything. And this is all triggered by a status state. And according to that, the status state usually is set as today. If I go to um, project, if it's not set, it, it will be today. So if I go and change that to the 15th, for example, you can see that I should have spent a certain amount of money based on that date. So if I hover over schedule variance, it tells you there what it basically is. It shows the difference between the cost terms, between the current progress and the baseline plan. And that one shows you the difference between how much it should have cost and how much it's actually cost to achieve this current level of completion to the status date or today's date 
if I just hover back over that, you get a little formula at the bottom. So budget cost work performed minus actual cost work perform, performed. And that one is budget cost work performed minus budget cost work scheduled. So these are tools that you can use to check whether you're doing good or not doing good. Now, if, for example, I go and change some of this information, so if I say um, actual work, um, it's got five days there, um, actual duration. If I say was five days, it's completed and that's gone to zero. Um, if you go six days, this starts costing you money. We haven't changed the scheduling and we haven't added anything extra, so um, everything's okay there. But if I put that to, um, let's add something else to this resource-wise. Let's. What task is this that I'm on? So this is core team. So let's go to um, develop product. Let's say develop product is already taken as five days. So everything is still okay, but let's say there's another five days left. And then when this starts clocking up six days, um, this will start costing us money. So at the moment, it isn't costing us anything. Well, it's costing us this, but that's the actual cost. But in terms of scheduling and cost variance, it's still the same. Why is nothing happening? You might be saying it's because the stated state is not past that date. So we need to change that. So go back to project, project and go up to the status date and put that forward to the 30th say and then you can see the cost coming up there. Now if I put 50% in there, this now shows. So the status date is quite key. If you forget like I did to change the status date, you're just going to get a zero no matter what happens. So as, you, as you're updating your project, you're looking at this and it's giving you an indication of what that's cost you in terms of scheduling or cost from what you planned it to, uh, to be on your baseline. Now, you can also create a report that will pick up these fields, these two fields, and some of the earned value fields as well. Now, the way to do that is go to reports. So you've already got under costs an earned value report which will pick up this sort of information and it tells you there um, a project earned value based on the status date so that gives you another indication that you need to be thinking about the status date if the actual course ACWP which is this blue line is higher than the BCWP which is the orange line that's a wah wah oops you're over budget so these are the fields that you need in your report if you're going to use this type of information so there's the, the fields there look so that's what you the budget cost work perform should be actual cost is there that's what you're expected at the end of the project so I want to recreate this little chart in a new one so if we go back to report and I want new I want a chart I'll call it costs I'll do get a blank screen I don't really want well I don't want a column chart so I need to change this to a line chart there line got that let's just get dots on the screen because the fields in there are not what I want so what I need to take off here is I need to go to costs and I need to put this to time as well time so I get the dates. I don't want it looking like that. So I need to edit the dates and change this duration to weeks. Let's say weeks. Looks a bit better. Um, a bit higgledy piggledy. So if I go to costs, what you want is the CV and SV fields. Then I don't need these work fields. Get rid of these. So now I've just got CV and SV fields like so doesn't look great now if you want the other earned value fields in here you can create them 
by pulling these fields in but it's probably best to do that into another or a different chart so I'll just get myself a different chart I want a line one I want line with markers okay comes in let's move that down there and then we just need to change the thing so it's the same as before so time edit the time to weeks okay and we're going for cost and then we want these three fields so one two three and then we don't want the other fields because that's just messing it up get rid of them get rid of that so this is very similar to the one i showed you earlier so if this is bigger than that not good and that's your base uh, budget cost work scheduled so budget cost work planned actual cost work planned so blue does not want to be bigger than orange so basically if I go back to the tracking Gantt as you're updating this project um, let's say that was five days um, actual duration is zero that's just a milestone um, is that a milestone yeah so just put that to 100% complete and that should be five days let's say that was seven days and that's just a milestone so we'll do 100% complete now this is the way I normally do update these sort of projects I don't just type in 100% unless it's a milestone so market product let's say we um, needed to do um, an extra two days on this so actual duration was 12 and we can add some more kits it doesn't mess this up so let's go to resources let's say they need some more kits let's say they needed 30 kits to do this close that and remember the the status date is not far enough forward to cover this and then if i go 100 percent complete the whole project's complete and then i change the status date to be the 3rd of november if i go back to project status date 3rd of November I'll go for the 4th of November okay so let's have a look at the report so that now will be under custom costs and then you've got that report there so blue is still higher than orange so that's not great and then you've got your cost variance and scheduling variance shown on there so it's just a tool that you can use to monitor how you're supposed to be going on your project. So for example, if you've got a 10 month project building houses, you're supposed to build one house a month, but you find after the second month that you've only built one and you should have built two. So you're only 50% of what you should have been. You should have been at say the status date you're doing the report, the status date you should be 100% on that, but you're only 50% done. That's where all this will come in. It will give you an indication of what's that costing you. All I wanted to show you, basically just the where you get the information to put in these fields and how, what triggers it, basically the status state. You have to stay, save a baseline. You have to use a status state, otherwise it doesn't work. And there you go. There are other earned value fields. If you want to have a look at those in the actual tables, earned value tables, you get all of these so you've got earned value let's put that on apply so that gives you th these fields so you've got scheduling variance cost variance there in within this if i go for a, another one then you've got the cost indicators and the scheduling indicators so apply and then you've got the other one which is the opposite one already seen that before Okay, so that's all I want to talk about in this little video. Hopefully that was of use to you. Uh, thank you for your time. I'll see you on the next one.